Hello, my name is Matt Clark and I'm a Lieutenant in the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. This critical incident debriefing is intended to provide you with information regarding an officer-involved shooting incident that occurred at 10th Avenue and Inca Street in Denver on September 9, 2020. You are about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you have an understanding of the details of this incident. The use of deadly force by a police officer demands a thorough investigation be completed. The Denver Police Department is committed to ensuring a full and timely investigation of these serious incidents. This allows for a comprehensive examination of the officer's actions to determine compliance with state statutes and department policies. In accordance with legislation passed in 2015, the investigation of police shootings in Denver are conducted by a multi-agency investigative team made up of members from the Denver and Aurora Police Department Homicides Units, as well as the Denver District Attorney's Office. All critical incident investigations are actively monitored by the Office of the Independent Monitor. A word of caution, the images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised. On Wednesday, September 9, 2020, around 5 p.m., Denver police officers responded to a call involving a male walking in the area of West 10th Avenue and Inca Street with a handgun in his hand. While officers were responding to this initial call for service, multiple people called 911 to report observing the same person. In total, 15 calls were received by the Denver Communication Center regarding the actions of this individual. Hello, Denver 911. What is the address of your emergency? Hi, Hi um, I'm on Inca and 11th, and there's a dude walking around waving a handgun around. He just pointed it at me. Tell me exactly what's happening. There is a middle-aged man with a gun. Who's, I think he's got some mental health problems that I've seen around here before, and he uh, seems to be threatening people with a gun. Someone uh, came by to warn us and told us that there was someone with a gun. There was a man with a gun, um, and he was waving it around at the park down the street. Yeah, there's a guy pulling a gun at people, so I just want to... Okay, is he on foot? pointed at a couple of people. Yeah, he's on foot. He's raising his hands all over the place. I just saw a man holding a handgun, waving it around and wandering down the street and yelling kind of profanities. There's someone with a gun waving it around. There's a person in the street uh, shouting at uh, motorists as they're driving by. I don't know if he's drunk or on drugs or what. We had some folks here in the cat shop and when they went out to the parking lot, they heard gunshots and came back in. There's a man in the middle of the intersection. He is um, kind of like waving his arms around, like asking cars to like come at him or come hit him. Somebody said that he has gun. a gun in his okay. hand. Uh, I'd like to report an individual um, with a handgun out. Okay, um, we're at? Pointing it all around. Hey, we got a guy over here on 10th and Santa Fe with a gun in his hand. Okay. Uh, walking down the street. I was on Santa Fe and 12th, and a Hispanic gentleman crossing the street against the light uh, pulled a gun on all the cars. I just heard what sounded like a series of gunshots. We had some crazy guy out in the street yelling, and he just fired his gun off about 8, 10 rounds. Officer Kyle Sonier and Officer Linnea Vento were working together in a patrol assignment and were the first officers to arrive in the area. These officers were wearing a standard Denver Police Department uniform and were using an unmarked police SUV. When the officers arrived in the area of 10th Avenue and Inca Street, they slowly approached the intersection and immediately observed the described male, who was later identified as 41-year-old Antonio Black Bear. Mr. Black Bear was seen approaching a black Ford Explorer that was parked on 10th Avenue between Santa Fe Drive and Inca Street. As the officers came to a stop at the intersection, they recognized Mr. Black Bear was holding a handgun in his right hand. Mr. Black Bear moved directly in front of the Ford Explorer and was observed pointing his handgun at the driver and passenger of that vehicle. At this time, it did not appear that Mr. Black Bear was aware of the officer's presence. Unbeknownst to the officers or the occupants of the vehicle, the handgun Mr. Black Bear possessed was an airsoft replica gun 
that was made to look like a Glock 17 firearm. The officers exited their vehicle and unholstered their duty handguns. Officer Saunier was on the driver's side of the unmarked police vehicle, and Officer Vento was positioned on the passenger side. About this time, a pickup truck occupied by an adult male and his child drove eastbound on West 10th Avenue from Santa Fe Drive. Mr. Black Bear pointed the handgun at the occupants of this vehicle as it went by. When the truck passed, the driver of the parked Ford Explorer slowly exited his vehicle. The driver observed Officer Vento, who immediately motioned for him to move away from the vehicle. The driver moved northbound across the street and ducked behind a parked vehicle on the north side of the street. Moments later, the other occupant of the vehicle emerged from the front passenger seat and sought cover behind the Ford Explorer. With the occupants of the vehicle in a safer position, Officer Sonier began issuing verbal commands to Mr. Black Bear. Show me your hands! Upon hearing the officer's commands, Mr. Black Bear turned his body toward the officers and pointed the handgun directly at them. Mr. Black Bear began walking slightly southeast across the street, which began closing the distance between Mr. Black Bear and the officers. Based upon Mr. Black Bear's non-compliance with the officer's orders and his actions with the handgun, both officers feared for their safety and discharged their weapons multiple times at Mr. Black Bear. The first rounds that were fired did not strike Mr. Black Bear. He continued moving in the direction of the officers with his arm extended towards them and the replica handgun in his hand. Officer Vento moved to a position that offered her additional cover while Officer Sonier continued firing at Mr. Black Bear. Shots fired! Shots fired! Mr. Black Bear was struck by one of these rounds and he fell to the ground on the north side of West 10th Avenue. The officers stopped firing their handguns when they believed Mr. Black Bear was no longer a threat. Officers Sonier and Vento promptly called for additional assistance and requested an ambulance respond to treat Mr. Black Bear. The responding officers approached Mr. Black Bear and immediately began rendering aid. Mr. Black Bear was transported to a local hospital by ambulance. He was pronounced deceased shortly after midnight on September 10, 2020. The handgun Mr. Black Bear possessed was moved by officers and secured in a police vehicle where it was later recovered by investigators. Both officers involved in this incident were uniformed patrol officers assigned to the department's citywide impact team. Following a police shooting, any officers involved in the incident are separated and assigned to a supervisor once a situation is stabilized. Involved officers remain in the company of the assigned supervisor throughout the initial investigation of the incident. Through the investigation, it was determined that a total of 13 rounds were fired by the officers. Investigators recovered a replica airsoft pistol that was designed to look like a Gen 3 Glock 17 semi-automatic handgun. Investigators worked to determine Mr. Black Bear's location and actions prior to the incident on 10th Avenue. Video from the light rail station at Colfax Avenue and Auraria Parkway captured Mr. Black Bear walking up to and boarding a light rail train with the replica handgun in his right hand. Mr. Black Bear exited the train at 10th Avenue and Osage Street. Video in the 900 block of Calumet Street captured Mr. Black Bear walking with the handgun in his hand as he began walking eastbound on 10th Avenue. All officers assigned to uniform patrol duties have been issued body-worn cameras. These devices are generally worn at chest level by patrol officers and are capable of recording both audio and video. Prior to being activated by the officer, the body-worn camera maintains a 30-second video buffer. Once the officer activates the camera, the 30-second video buffer is captured and the camera starts recording both audio and video. It is important to note that a body-worn camera captures a general perspective of what is in the camera's view. However, this footage may or may not be what the officer actually saw or perceived. At times, an officer's movement or hand positioning may inadvertently block the camera's view. Additionally, the camera may not capture light in the same way as an officer's eye. Here is the raw video footage that was captured by the involved officer's body-worn cameras. Again, viewer discretion is advised.
Show me your hands! Get your... Impact 10, I need an ambulance. Code 10, we've got the party down. Officers, Fire, shots please, fired. Please. Good job, Kyle. Show me your hands! Get your hands up! Get some cover with him. We're good, Vento. You good? You're good, Kyle? Okay, yes. Yes, officers are good. We've got the party still at gunpoint. We need something so we can go check him. I cannot get to him yet. I do not know where the gun is at. Down there? Yes, he's down right here. Okay. I can't see his hands. I don't know if anyone's hit over here. Right now, the point of aim is westbound. Are you guys okay? Thank you. Yes. Impact 10, we are approaching the party. No, give me a second. Stay right there. You ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bro, show me your hands. Let me see your hands. Get your hands up. Denver police, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. I got the gun I see right the there. Gun. It's under his leg. Okay. I'll go hands. Okay. Go hands. Right. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we can get some good okay. stuff going here, guys. Take off the backpack. Yep. Start, start um, yep. assistance, yep. medical. Let me get some gloves on. Okay. He has yep. money in his hands. Good Nate? Yeah, okay. Hey, you're okay, just put him back here. Okay, gun. Yeah. Good shot, Nate. Okay. You're okay. You're okay, buddy. We're gonna get you some help. Denver police. Stay with us. Mike, are they good over there? Thank you. Can we check if they're okay? Thank you, Mike. Do you know where your passenger's at? Let me get a knife. Let me get a knife. Thank you. Start cutting his clothes off. CPR and him going. Start his clothes off. Let's get him rolled over. Okay. Cut his clothes off. Yeah. Okay. Stay with us, sir. Officer Ben to Denver Police. We're getting you medical assistance. Stay with us, sir. Other one? Watch the backpack. I'm going to talk to the victim. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Cut this off completely. Yeah. Okay, so he's got a head wound here. Okay. okay. So you're checking his back, you're yep. just going to roll him back. Okay. Else there. Okay. Impact 10, I believe. Impact 10, I believe. Okay. Okay. I just need my medics. Need Everyone my else medic. can go no, coconut, no, no, please. No, no, no. Get his pants open. They're going to want to get him totally stripped. So. Your knife is better, Kyle. Yeah. Is he, he's cuffed back here? Yeah, he's cuffed. Okay. Just going to keep the road hey, open. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Make sure no one's blocking the road. Okay. I hear it coming out. There it is. Nate, nobody else? Hold that in. No. Car's coming in. Just make sure you leave a space for the ambulance to get back up. Who can follow the bus? I got it. Thank you. Whoever's got it, thank you. Yeah. 
Did someone say code 9? Can we start getting winners, Dave? Start getting winners, Dave. Start getting winners, Dave. Hey, Kyle, what do you need? Um, I need these guys checked on over here. That was our line of fire. What do you mean? So on the other side of the bus, there's Jack. So when we showed up, he had these guys at gunpoint turned on us. So I just want to make sure everyone over there is okay. Okay, do we have witnesses over there? I believe so. Who's that? Grab this for me, sir. Of course. Yeah, you know, if you don't mind, you have a partner. I got a partner. Call. Thank you. Here we go. Here we put this down. Got that in. Where do I grab? Okay, switch me, switch me. Oh. Lift it straight up, Kyle. Okay. Kyle. Yeah. Can we get some cars here? Sir, get behind a car, please! Good job, Kyle. Show me your hands! Get your hands up! Send us some cars. We're at Inca 10th and Inca. Subject down. Shots fired. You're good, Kyle? We have a Ford that's a victim car. It's gonna be Colorado 743. Edward Ocean Victor, two victims. Sir, come back here, please. Move back. So we have a weapons call that came out. He had uh, the Ford, two at gunpoint. When we uh, gave commands, he turned around and shots fired. So there's somebody in that Ford there? <laughs> you had a victim vehicle, a passenger in your vehicle, sir? Okay. Are you guys okay? Come back this way behind the GMC. Yes, he was the driver. Victim? Victim driver, correct. Who's this guy? Suspect. Uh-huh. Anybody else in the car? Um, passenger ran into the building, what he's saying. Okay, so we think the car's... Yes, we just want to clear him and secure the weapon. Okay. okay. Kyle, you good? Okay. Go show me your hands. Don't move. Get your hands up. Never police. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Take off the backpack. Start. Start. Um. Assistance. Medical. Get some gloves on. Okay. He has money in his hands. You're good, Nate. Okay. You're okay. Just put him back here. Okay. Gun. Good shot, Nate. Okay. You're okay. You're okay, buddy. We're gonna get you some help. Denver Police. Stay with us. Mm -hmm. Impact 10. We have the medics coming 10, correct? We located the weapon. Thank you, Mike. Do you know where your passenger's at? Let me get a knife. Let me get a knife. Thank you. Here, here's the knife. Okay. Stay with us, sir. Officer Vento, Denver Police. We're getting you medical assistance. Stay with us, sir. Thank you. Another one? Watch the backpack. I'm going to talk to the victim. Yeah.
Where's my partner? Uh, are you Vento? Yeah. Okay. Hi. I'm Detective Andrews. Hi, Andrews. Is your body camera on or off? Yes, it's still on. Okay, you can turn it off. Okay. Seems secure. 15073. The Denver District Attorney will review the details of this incident and determine if the officer's actions were in compliance with Colorado law. After the District Attorney renders a decision, the Denver Police Department's Internal Affairs Bureau and Conduct Review Bureau will complete an administrative review of this case. The details of the case will be presented to a Use of Force Review Board, which is made up of community members and police command officers. The board will determine whether the officer's actions were in compliance with the high standards expected of every Denver police officer related to policies, training, and tactics. For additional information regarding the investigation of critical incidents or the Denver Police Department's use of force policies, you may visit denvergov.org police. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident briefing.